Dude, after being away for two weeks, one thing has never been clearer to me. Streaming is not something that human beings are meant to do. It's very strange. It's been two weeks of normal conversations, non-combative interactions. Hi, hello, nice to meet you. Where are you from? Have a good day. That looks tasty, et cetera, et cetera. And then just immediate a, a flood of, of the most insane people. Thousands and thousands of the most insane takes all coming at you, begging like, like little hands out of the, the sands of the abyss, trying to drag you down to their level. It's madness. It became so clear to me, talking with other relatively normal people. Now, we were at a Disney hotel, so normal is a bit of a stretch. Hey, librarian, thank you as well. Thank you. It is crazy, especially after, like, I had six days with no internet access whatsoever, and I was like, oh my god, I feel amazing. And then I got internet access for two hours. I went on Twitter and the Twitter algorithm served me like 80 tweets about people that were like, they, ma they masculinized Princess Peach's face. It's so over for Nintendo. And I just, I, airplane mode. I went straight back to airplane mode and said, forget about that. Taking a couple of days off, you, that's just enough to, that's like a salve on a wound. If you really want to cure the disease that creates the weeping sores, you got to spend more time away. <laughs> it became so clear to me. I got down to the root cause. I was like, oh my God, this is, people are insane. That's the cause of everybody's problems. I know I keep saying it. It's so weird. It is not normal to be like thinking of what to say and then have like 2000 voices in your internal monologue. When we were on the cruise, we got seated uh, at a group table, which was terrifying at first, because you're, you're in the same table for like eight days, right? And I was like, oh, there's been some mistake. Why are there six chairs? We're only three people. And they're like, oh, we're, we're going to put you with another family. Don't worry, you'll make friends. And I was like, this is how you get a one-star review on Yelp. Then it was another family with a 15-month-old son from England, and we had a great time. First couple of days, we were just feeling each other out. After that, we, you know, got a little bit more like into the conversation, figuring out where everybody's from. What are you doing? You know, where have you been on vacation before in your life? Did you exchange emails? Well, I let my wife exchange emails with them because I know that I'm not going to coordinate with them. I'm, I'm a little flaky like that. It's crazy how many normal people are out there, man. You wouldn't think that there are if you're online a lot. But if you actually like go outside and are forced to talk to people, <laughs> there's so many normal people out there. Was the 15 year old a viewer? You mean the 15 month old? I now see like this is why that's a relatively mild mistake. But this is why like the human brain is not suited for this level of you know, cross-communicative bandwidth. I'm capable of introducing my own errors into the cognitive process. I don't need, you know, the sum total of your compound interest of insanity added on top of it, mixed into the damn forever stew of my psychosis, okay? It is crazy. I was losing it in Apollo's chat today, so there was a, there's a new dull. Hey, Tungleberry. You hear what I'm saying? This is how you know human beings were not created by God or like another benevolent creator. I'm not saying I've got, I'm like cast in the stocks while people throw tomatoes at me like it's my cosmic purpose. I'm just saying like, there, there's no plan for this shit. It's not like a, a deity is like, and then we'll invent live streaming. If there was a plan, that shit stopped in like, you know, before the invention of the steam engine. He was like, they give them, give them some sharp sticks, give them some, they'll make axes, they'll make spears, they'll make knives. He wasn't planning for this. Jesus did not take the wheel. By the way, can I tell you something? North Americans, we actually have to fix our culture. I'm not being ironic. We were on the beautiful islands of Hawaii, right? We went to um, Big Island. The island is a volcano 
the entire landscape is formed by millions of years of lava flows, right? That then uh, hardened and became a completely unique geographic structure. And like once every 15 years, the volcano erupts a little bit and lava flows down from the peak and destroys a bunch of stuff. First question, like nine Americans put up their hand in the backseat of the bus. Tour guide said, yeah. They all at the same time said, is that covered by their insurance policy? We cannot let this be our legacy as a people, okay? It's, this is the cosmic wonders of nature. Like 3000 degree fire that's also liquid is being shot up from the earth. Your first question is like, hey, is that covered by your policy? You weren't meant to, to you were meant to look at it and go like, hur, 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 and then like, like get on your hands and knees and go like, we, we either thank you or we cower in fear of you. We weren't meant to be like, you know, oh, is this considered a force majeure according to, I didn't, I, it's been a while since I read the terms of service from Prudential. Also, <laughs> I don't know. I, I need Chad's verdict on this, which is a scary thing to invite. I don't know if I'm the dweeb in this situation, but I tweeted that like Hello Kitty exclusive Pearl Harbor memorial merchandise because I felt like I was losing my mind. So when we were in Honolulu, we went to the Pearl Harbor historic sites. And I know that it was 70 years ago. 80, 80 something years ago. But I kind of assumed, maybe this is naive of me, I kind of assumed that the Pearl Harbor historic sites would be like a little bit, mm, I'm trying to think of the right word. They would have been like sober, somber, I guess is a better word. It's like somber memorials um, where you would be like, you know, a, a tragedy occurred here. And not only did a, did a tragedy occur here, but that tragedy in a immediate effect, but then also the ripples afterwards had an enormous impact on the world in ways that are still shaking out to this day. But what it really was is like, as soon as you walk in, and there's there's different parts, right? That are like, this is about like the USS Arizona, and this is about like the build up to the war, and this is like what the world was like in the US with, before they entered the war. But like really, you kind of immediately, they're like, hey, which of the 12 Pearl Harbor shirts would you like to buy? Would you like to buy the one that has the newspaper on the front that says like, you know, Japanese, Navy attacks Pearl Harbor. Would you like to buy the one that has like two guns crossed over an American flag and says like December 7th, 1941? Would you like to buy the one that has like the USS Arizona like blown up in half that says these colors don't run? Would you like to buy the one that has like a nuke on it that says this country was not descended from fearful men? And I was looking around like, am I the only person that expected to come here and like, I'm not even American, but I expected to come here and, like, learn stuff, but also to pay respects. But people were shoveling every size of shirt you could imagine into, you know, Pearl Harbor tote bags and rushing the doors, man. It was, it was crazy. Eating, like, just eating the hot dogs outside of the gift shop. <laughs> and, like, hey, honey, hey, hey, how many of the of, of the shirts uh, with the American flag and like the stars are crying and it says Pearl Harbor Memorial Sites on the top? How many of those do you think is too many? Eight? Eight? Is eight too many? But what's crazy is that, I mean, I guess in a way, you can almost look at it as a good thing. It's like, isn't that a sign that the world has done some healing at the very least? You know, you're like, well, it's so long ago that we can put it on a t-shirt and then we'll buy that t-shirt and that'll give the person who put the t-shirt in their store enough money to eat lunch today. And <laughs> like, we've, we've turned it into like a, an economic thing. We've turned grief into merchandise. 
Also felt like I was like the only motherfucker there that was like, I want to learn some shit about Pearl Harbor. It felt like everybody else there was like, check it out, I'm at the Pearl Harbor Museum. And I'm like, what's it? Why are you here? Couldn't you just go to like a brew pub or something like that? I just don't understand why... Like, you don't just have to go to the museum if you got no interest in it. Fake Pearl Harbor fans. Listen, that's not what I meant, but... It wasn't even, by the way, the fact that Hello Kitty is like a Japanese company. Like, some people were like, that's what makes it funny. I think that makes it funnier, but I also think it's kind of a sign that, you know, international relations have healed. It was more the fact that I was like, there's a fucking store at the Pearl Harbor Museum that has Hello Kitty doing the Rosie the Riveter, like, we can do it. I'm like, what the fuck are we doing here as a society? A thousand people work at a factory making a Hello Kitty resin figure shaped like Rosie the Riveter that then gets packed into fucking boxes, placed on a, a tanker ship, like a freight ship, sailed across the fucking Pacific Ocean, lands on Hawaii, they unload that shit, they put it up, they put in like customized marketing and stuff like that. It's insanity. What are, what are we doing as a species? Hello, Corey, by the way. Hello. That's so why I was asking Kate because she's been to the Hiroshima monument. And I was like, is it like that over there? And she was like, no. But it kind of sounds like Corey's saying yes. <laughs> I guess it's just people, though. It's not just North America. Like, uh... When I went to the Korean War Museum, you know, it's an amazing museum in Seoul, and they have, like, all of these, like, I don't want to call them period pieces, period appropriate machines of war outside, anti-aircraft guns, you know, gunships and fighter planes and bombers and stuff like that, and I was kind of, like, walking through it Ajashi style, you know? What's, what's Ajashi style? That's when you walk through anything, usually the produce section of a grocery store with your hands clasped behind your back like Morpheus, examining every single apple, but then not buying any. Um, and I was walking through with a sense of, you know, like, wonder, but also fear that, like, look at what we as a, as a people have done. You know, we put our incredible talents to work building this machine designed exclusively to annihilate. And then there were like, just people that were like, check it out, check it out guys, I'm in the warplane. Wait, 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 we didn't get a good photo. I'm about to drop a bomb, pew, pew. So maybe I'm the dweeb, man. Maybe I'm the dweeb. I visited the DMZ by Panmujom last week, same vibe. I never went to the DMZ, which I'm kind of regretful of. I definitely had a lot of people that I worked with that went to the DMZ and like they take the photo like the peace sign next to the North Korean guard. You think that's the best job in North Korea or the worst job in North Korea? You think that guy's like, I got the easiest job in this bitch? Or do you think every person that comes up to take a photo is like, is just one fucking call of the void away from starting World War Three? He's probably gritting his teeth. So another person walks up and does a peace sign and like kicks their leg up behind and they do like a can we get a selfie and you're like, you imperialist dogs were it not for the great spirit i have within myself it would <laughs> i'll kick off an international incident incident right now super mario wonder so true super mario wonder apropos of nothing at all you see what I say, or what I'm saying when I say this is not a normal pursuit? What are we doing here? I know this is like the most narcissistic thing I've ever said. You guys are different. Do, does the average person, and I'm envious of this, by the way, it's not meant to be insulting. Does the average person have no level of introspection? Or a, a muted level of introspection compared to what you see in, in, well, see, because it's like this, do people not examine, like, themselves 
and then the world around them and then themselves and then the world around them and and like modify their their feelings and behaviors as a result of that i just couldn't get over like if you're like 12 and you're at the pearl harbor memorial and you're like check it out boo 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 i'm shooting at a, a japanese zero kamikaze pilot mom boo i'm like okay you're 12 like you're supposed to suck no disrespect when they were like you know people in their in their 40s and 50s and 60s there i'm like what the hell is but he, show some respect man i'm not even from the country and i'm showing some respect but come on you're like 55 years old and you're like at the pearl harbor memorial and you're like eight bucks for a hot dog that's crazy it's not the point you idiot obviously you shouldn't be paying eight bucks for a hot dog at the pearl harbor historic sites but it's really like you're in a a, a site with unbelievable importance for like global history that we're still living in today and you're like the hot dogs are expensive shut up idiot go to the costco that's not what it's not here to sell hot dogs like not every venue on earth has to be like whoa 22 bucks for a t-shirt eight bucks for a hot dog what are they trying to do here just relax I'm just gonna be honest, if you're watching this on Twitch, you're probably having a good time. If you're watching this on YouTube, have mercy. I have been living the way God intended people to live for two weeks. I have been blissfully unaware of the internet. Uh, I've spent very little time looking at a screen. I've, I've been having FaceTime with my family and also strangers and it was totally fine. It was totally great. Honestly, I didn't have a single bad interaction. And now I'm looking at pixels in a 16 by 9 grid. I'm going to be playing roguelike poker while filtering the thoughts of 8,000 people through my own unique mental problems simultaneously and trying to weave that together in some kind of coherent stream of consciousness. It's gonna, I, I, it's gonna take some time. Let's put it that way. Like, do you know what my average conversation has been like for the last two weeks? Hey, how you doing, guys? Hey, how's your day been? What'd you guys get up to today? Oh, us? We went to the Dole Plantation. Meanwhile, I'm at the Dole Plantation. Everybody's eating pineapple ice cream. And I'm like, all I can think about is how many people got their ass beat in the Dole Plantation because they weren't working hard enough. That isn't touched upon at all. Instead, every single placard that you see is like, James Dole founded the Dole Corporation in 1868. What an amazing man. And I'm like, not even a say, we plant 28,000 pineapples by hand every single day. And there's not even a single one that's like, by the way, <laughs> the, the historical atrocities committed by this corporation are things that we don't stand by to this day. It's just like a pineapple takes up to 18 months to fully grow into something that can be turned into ice cream. And I'm like, what, what are we doing here, man? Not even a single monument or something. We're just out here going yum pineapples. And don't get me wrong, I ate the pineapple ice cream, but at the same time, <laughs> and it was good, but I don't really care that much about the pineapple except for how it tastes. I want to know more about the people playing on the pineapples and the way that it affected the economy of the area. And, you know, if we could go back in time, we would have done things a little bit differently, knowing what we know now and with the modern standards and respect for humanity that we have and stuff like that. But just yum, yum, yellow ice cream. Anyway. Playing Balatro. What? I cannot. No screen like this exists in nature. How is the human brain supposed to understand what I'm looking at here? New run. This is not a Balatro thing. This is it's just going to take me a minute to remember that this is what I do, okay? Hey, can I make a little joke about Hawaii without everybody losing their minds? This one's just for the people from Oahu, okay? Hawaii is very interesting because they have this aloha culture, which is a little bit more like be nice, stay laid back, hang loose, don't take everything so seriously. So they've got that culture, but it's also the United States of America, which means that on Oahu, every single store you go into has a sign that says like, um, 
Aloha, my nice Ohana. Just letting you know, trespassers will be shot on sight. Mahalo! It, it, I was kind of losing my mind a little bit. It was such a mix of like, you know, like let everybody be what everybody wants to be. And then like the end of it was like, we will kill you if you steal something from our store. And I was like, oh, you know what? What can you say? Also, I'm just throwing this out here. Apparently, nobody in Honolulu has ever used their signal light. Is that what? I kind of thought Aloha was like, when you, in Canada, if you bump into somebody by accident and you say sorry, and then they say sorry, and you say sorry, that was my bad, and they say sorry. Apparently, the second half of Aloha culture is, you know, I'm never going to let you know where I'm going. Did you go to any other islands? I think so, but I kind of got lost. Like, it was a long time. We were on Big Island. We were on Oahu. We were on, we went to a place called Na Willy Willy. I did stay at the White Lotus with my aunt, Jennifer Coolidge. What am I doing? I'm on the second turn, man. I'm sorry, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> also, can I tell you something that's crazy? I, I, in my heart of hearts, it irritated my wife like crazy, but I planned to work out every single day that I was gone. I'm not worried that I'm going to lose the habit. The Peloton's too much of my identity right now anyway. The Peloton Supercut came out. Um, the Egg Carton has been keeping the rides going. There's even a Peloton sub-community on the Discord now. But I was like, I'd like to work out every day on the, on the vacation, right? So the first day, I, I packed shoes. I packed six pairs of shorts, workout shirts. I packed the sweatbands and stuff like that. Um, Long story short, 5.30 a.m. first day, put on my gym clothes, right? Go up into the uh, the gym, start walking on the treadmill. They don't have uh, exercise bikes that I like. They don't have exercise bikes you clip in, so I said, I'll just go for a jog, right? Ship was swaying a little bit. Start walking, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then I get, it gets to be time to take a little jog, right? So I start jogging and I'm kind of like swaying a little bit. And uh, I lost control of my brain. Without any executive function, I smashed the button that was basically like, I'm having a heart attack. Uh, and I got off the treadmill and I just sat down in a chair outside of the gym, seasick as fuck, like an insane person at uh, 6.15 in the morning. I sat there for two hours with just being so seasick. I was Googling fucked up shit like do fish get nauseous underwater. And then I said, you know what? The nausea left and I was like, I'm fine. I'm fine. And then I stood up to go back to my room and I walked straight to the bathroom and I didn't even get on my knees. I just bent over at my waist and went <laughs> and yacked a uh, like an entire stomach's contents of bolus into the toilet, flushed it down the toilet, and then I was like, I'm fine. But I did not work out. <laughs> you worked out, but it didn't work. So true. I did the work. It didn't work, as Lizzo said. Probably my favorite artist. Nothing happened with her while I was gone, right? <laughs> that happened like four months before I left. Anyway. Any good buffet freaks this trip? <laughs> this is a, buff, a buffet freak. I mean, I don't want to be too judgmental. I save that stuff for when the cameras are off. Right, Kate? <laughs> I, I don't know. I think, like... My philosophy on the buffet... Okay, we're on the cruise for 10 days. You can't go full like Caligula for 10 days. You'll do serious damage to your body. It's not like, oh, you can't have any fun. It's just like, you're gonna feel like total shit. Like you're not gonna be able to enjoy your vacation as much as you normally could if you're living like Orson Welles, right? So for breakfast every morning, you can ask my wife. There was not a day where I was like, yum, chocolate chip pancakes. For breakfast every day, I tried to make sure that I set myself up for success little egg fried rice, little sauteed spinach, 
two halved tomatoes, you know? And then maybe you'd throw some stuff on there, throw a hash brown on there, you know, throw a breakfast sausage, a couple of slices of bacon or something like that, four Coke Zeros. And then, you know, it's nine in the morning and you're like, I've set myself up. Now I can, I can, because I was having dessert every night, which is not typical for me. So, but I was like, I set myself up for success. But you do see a lot of people that were like, you know, day one of the cruise, they're like, I'm so excited for my vacation. And like day four, they look like they got hit by a truck. And then you're like, this because you're eating just crab legs and chicken strips for, for lunch every day. It's too, you got to add like a little, just some vegetable content on top of everything else. Like, it's just crazy to me. You know, the chicken strips are there for kids, right? I don't want to offend anybody by saying they're not. Here's the thing. I love a good chicken tender, but the chicken tenders on the cruise are not good. Take it from somebody that ate his kid's chicken tenders after she decided that I'm not going to eat tonight, you know? I eat them, you know, they're still like at the end of the day, they're okay. But these are not like, you know, premium chicken tenders. This is mostly just like, it's kind of like fried breadcrumbs stuffed with mattress foam. The people were going apeshit for the chicken tenders. And also, we as a society have to bring back the stocks. And I'm not talking about GME, okay? We need public shaming, and public shaming, we don't use it for real crimes. They go to prison. We bring it back for people that fill up their cup at the fountain drink machine and then drink it at the fountain drink machine when there's a line behind them, because that's crazy. You'd even see some motherfuckers, to, there's like two levels to this, right? The first one is they fill up their cup 100% of the way, drink 20% and then fill it up again. Like, no, 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 I'm not waiting for 120% of one Coca-Cola, okay? But that at least I can understand is just you have no awareness of other people being around you because you're from a town with 35 people in it, no problem. The second level, and this is true joker nonsense, is that people will go fill up their cup at the fountain, drink half of it, and then not fill it up. And I'm like, you're just blocking the way just to be a motherfucker. There's, not a, you're, there's no benefit to it for you whatsoever. You're just standing in the fucking way. Anyway, sorry. Well, it's 10.09. <laughs> I've, I've played six hands of Balatro. Also, I don't know if this makes me European or Canadian. Americans, if you love ice so much, why don't you marry it? People go fucking apeshit for ice. I didn't realize, like, how... <laughs> Has anyone else ever noticed this when they go to the United States? I feel like it's crazy to me that people are out there putting ice in like every single drink that they get. Sometimes it's nice, but at the same time, I'm like, it adds such a drag to your life. You know, like every time you, you've got to get drinks for like you, your wife, your seven kids. And then you got to remember that like half of the people want ice in their orange juice and half of the people want Fucking, can you make a Shirley Temple out of like eight different kinds of soda at the fountain? It's, it's crazy. If, if my wife said, can I get you a drink? And I said, Coke Zero, she'd say, I already know. But if she said, you want ice or no ice? I would be like, are you crazy? You're, you're, you're the love of my life. I'm not gonna make you go to the fucking ice machine and wait for three minutes just so my drink is a little cold. Just bring it back, it doesn't molecularly change the, f the composition of the beverage. Just go treat yourself, go get me some Coke Zero. Hurry back, <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, don't dilly-daddle, but at the same time, treat yourself. Listen, sign up for the next demo. What is it? Local Thunk, are you here? What is this Star Citizen honey dickin' we got going on here? You play the demo in Steam Summerfest. Hey, get ready, the full game comes out in the fall. Boom, here we got two more for you. Here's another demo. I'm playing this demo, Steam fucking fall games done quick. Small game festival number 25 this year happening concurrently with the 98th Steam sale that's ever. And hey, here's another, here's another demo for you. Hey, when you finish this demo, why don't you enjoy the demo? I've been cooked. It's a good demo, I'm just saying. It is, it's a little bit of honey dickin'. Nothing happened to James Franco while I was gone, right? Like, he's still cool to reference James Franco. <laughs>
Nothing happened to Alexander the Great when I was gone, right? Like, he's, we still look back in history as a, he's like a hero instead of like a, a despot. Hey, we're all still cool with uh, Judas Iscariot, right? Like, he hasn't done any... When I was gone, he didn't do anything crazy, like betray the one son of Christ or whatever. For three coins. I don't know anything about the Bible, by the way. Bro, how funny is it by... So, listen. <laughs> this might be <laughs> offensive, which is great. But... We were um, in Hawaii, right? We were at a resort. I thought there's no fucking way. Opened up the drawer next to my bedside. Gideon's Bible. I said, really? Forgetting something, aren't we? I went one drawer down, Book of Mormon. I was like, there we are. No disrespect, the Church of Latter-day Saints. Look out the fucking window. Beautiful white and black sand beaches, the ocean, perfect temperature. One beautiful cloud in the sky as if it was painted there by Bob Ross. Water slides, 500 man-made swimming pools. If you think my ass is cooped up in my, that's the, the most misapplied Book of Mormon that has ever been released into society. You are not going to get any converts at the Olani Disney Hotel Resort and Spa in Koalina, Hawaii, okay? You gotta go to find like a, a Motel 6 that's like on eight hours midpoint of a 16 hour drive between like two mid-sized American cities. And then at that point, you might find you driving for 10 days, bleary ass eyes all hooped up on decaf. You're like, fuck it, I need to find God. Just give me a book. Somebody put a book in my hands. My ass is not putting on sunscreen, eating, uh, you know, smoked salmon al fresca, and then like, hmm, I'm looking for something to do. You walk two steps, people are like, you wanna go kite surfing today? You wanna, you wanna find God in the ocean? You wanna snorkel with some yellow tang? You're like, no, 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 no. No, sorry, I can't go to a luau tonight. I'm finding God. Just relax, okay? You gotta put more of that shit in Indiana, okay? Take all of it. Don't start in Hawaii. Do you take all the hangers and soap out of the hotels when you leave? Are you crazy? We don't take the hangers. Of course we take the soap. You pay for the soap. I'm not taking the hangers, though. What am I gonna do with that? You might as well take the soap. Unless it's in one of those, like, you know, Walgreens Pharmacy anti-theft cases where you can just hit the button. They're, like, gonna throw out the soap after you leave, obviously. What about taking towels? I think that's theft. You do not take the iron. Come on. Did you take the ironing board? No, you, you don't. Where, where, where would you even put that? It doesn't even make sense. How many ironing boards you got in your house? What about the TV? You wouldn't want the average hotel TV. It's the only CRTs that are like still in use to this day. Is that you either have a 40 inch TV that's like as deep as it is wide, and it's fucking like you can't even turn it to face the bed. You gotta like sit up and watch TV like this, or they're like, check it out, we bought flat screens in 2007. So there's like a nine inch flat screen mounted in the corner of the ceiling on the other side of the room, and you're like, You gotta bring your own, man. There's no other way. For whatever reason, their cable package doesn't come with a guide. So true. Me at the sports bar on the Disney cruise ship, watching the American tables try to argue with the bartender to turn on NBC for because the football game they want to see is on NBC. The bartender has to keep politely explaining that because this is owned by Disney, they can only play either ESPN, ESPN2, or... Uh, ABC. He's like, bro, I'll give you my login. I'll give you my Peacock login. Please, can you just put on this game? Uh, yeah, we don't, we don't get that channel. I'm sorry. Hey, NL. I tried my parents' Peloton when I visited, and Dennis Morton played a rock concert recording where the singer said, we're all here to worship Satan. What the heck are you up to every morning? 
Uh, so I did that ride as well, but I don't know, it's just my upbringing or whatever, but when like a singer says like, we're here to worship the devil or whatever, I'm just like, all right, brother. It doesn't really like freak me out or anything like that. It's kind of like, it's pretty, like kind of an inert phrase. Doesn't really, it doesn't pog me up and it doesn't frighten me. You know, there's people out there getting scared because, like, Doja Cat has short hair, saying she's, like, a satyr sent by the devil to corrupt the nation's youth. What the fuck is wrong with you, brother? You just got a haircut. Are you crazy? You're scared of... Snip, 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 ah, 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 snip, 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 snip. What are you talking about? Are you crazy? Anyway, sorry. <laughs> And yet someone said you were anti-theist earlier. Well, to be fair, I did say get the Book of Mormon out of the Olani Resort and Spa in Koalina, Hawaii. Ain't no one reading that shit when there's a lazy river two feet away. But I also think that's just like, you know. <laughs> that's just common sense. Also, we went to Volcanoes National Park in on Big Island in Hawaii near Hilo. And like from a hundred yards away, I saw two people standing next to uh, a stand that had like brochures on it. And I could only see it from the back. I knew immediately. I was like, that's the Jehovah's Witness canvassers. And it got me thinking, there must be like a factory somewhere that just makes that shelf, right? Like their whole job is just making the shelf that the Jehovah's Witnesses put the pamphlets on that are like, this is how... I, I gotta do, there should be like a podcast with some of the people that work at that factory. Like it's the same shelf in Vancouver that it is in Hilo, that it is in New York City. Like, I don't know if maybe they got a different supplier overseas or something like that, but I gotta get into the supply chain of who's making the Jehovah's Witness bookshelf. It seems like a really interesting concept. But I was also like, what are you doing here? This is one of the most like beautiful places on earth. If anyone was in a crisis, they would just walk through like the bubbling sulfur ponds and like they'd find something within themselves. They're not like, you gotta put that shit outside of like a Boston pizza in Markham, Ontario. When someone, like there's nothing rushing in from outside to fill the gap in their soul. Like their ass is here being fulfilled. You're wasting your time here. Go to like a, <laughs> go to an Olive Garden parking lot when you're like, you know, about to have a mental breakdown because there's no parking in the parking lot, even though the parking lot is 20 times bigger than the restaurant and the food's not that good. And you're like, why the fuck am I at Olive Garden in the first place? And why is everybody else at Olive Garden? Why can't I find a parking spot at Olive Garden? The restaurant fucking sucks. Then I'd be like, save me. Not at Volcanoes National Park. Did you get a Hawaiian shirt? You know I got a Hawaiian shirt, brother. You know I went to Chief's Luau. I got recognized at Chief's Luau. I'd like to apologize to the person who recognized me. I, I was perfectly polite, but I was a little bit out of it. They made the Mai Tais too motherfucking strong, dude. Meanwhile, they, I've been having people drop uh, hula dances in my face for like three hours straight. A dude lit a torch on fire and swallowed it, burned the shit out of his tongue, grabbed the fire with his hand, and went a and then like put the fire on the other end of the torch and then spun it in the air like my brain was so fucked up man it was great though if you're ever in uh if you're ever on oahu go ahead to chief's luau it was a great time what did you do to the guy who recognized you i mean it was fine i just like wasn't at my best he said like hey we're from edmonton and i was kind of like i had to do the math and i was like oh he recognizes me this isn't just like the world's most proud edmontonian <laughs> i was like this this guy's just maybe he didn't recognize me maybe he was just like uh he just loves telling people about edmonton and i was like oh okay that's cool and then he said this is my friend he knows you too and i said oh nice to meet you and we shook hands i was starting to like get up to speed with the interaction and then he said uh it was uh, I just said one thing to say, do more content with Ludwig. And then I was like, oh, I get it now. I like he's a busy guy, but I'll do my best. And then I said, y'all stay safe now. Y'all take care. But I was like, I could have been a little bit more on my game. But I kind of, it was like a, the interaction was a little stealth to begin with. I didn't know, because sometimes, like we were, when we were at the Dole Plantation, 
uh, a man about my age who was very, he seemed a little nervous, came up to me and he said, hi, excuse me. And I was like, switched into Northern Lion mode, right? And then he was like, uh, do you guys need a ticket for the hedge maze? We have an extra. And I, I had to switch back in the normal guy, non-confrontational mode where I was like, oh, thank you so much, but we're not gonna be here long enough. You should try to give it to somebody else. And he said, oh, okay. I will say though, I got recognized by two teenagers on the cruise. Shout out to you if you're out there. Now, if you've never been on one of these cruises, there's like lounges, right? That are age limited. So there's a lounge, there's actually, there's a lounge for like zero to two year olds, basically, which is called a daycare. And then there's like two areas for kids that are like uh, three to 10. And then there's one for kids that are like 10 to 14. And then there's one for kids that are like 15 to 17 or whatever. Anyway, so I was in the like, age appropriate lounge for my child all the time making sure that she went down the slide a okay but on the last day they did an open house in the other lounges and i was like okay honey let's go check out these other lounges here and uh i i went up to the teen lounge and the teenagers who recognized me were there and we played guitar hero together on the guitar hero arcade cabinet and i was like this is a one of one nl interaction that's, and I'm not saying this to be a narcissist. I was like, I had a great time, but I was also like, that's a, that's a minted mythic rare right there. Did you lose? Yeah. But I thought I did a pretty good job as a 34 year old man. I think that at the very least, they were like, this guy was better than I expected. <laughs> Probably. And also it was so funny. And it, it, I mean this in a non offensive way. Cause I was the same way when I was a teenager through till I was like, you know, 28 probably. But everywhere else on the cruise, when somebody sees your cute toddler, they're like, good morning princess. Wow, you're so cute. Wow, you're so adorable. How's your day been so far? Wow, she's so precious. Oh, you guys, she's so smart. They know how to interact with, uh, with young kids, right? It's like high energy trying to entertain them. When I took my three-year-old into the teenager lounge, it was like, nobody knew what the fuck was going on. I felt nobody talked to her at all. People would like look at her and then kind of like look to the side. It was like bizarro world, man. I was, I was laughing my ass off when I left. It's like teenagers there, I get it. You're like, you've been in this bunker for like 10 days and you're like, we're adults, we're adults. It's pretty cool. There's like a soda fountain in here. There's a Guitar Hero cabinet. You could play Madden. This is like what being an adult is like. And then I brought in someone where I was like, you guys are peers. And they're like, what? No, dude, no. That's Cap. That's Cap, bro. And I'm like, no, to me, you're basically, you're basically the, sh the same age, just so you know. I'm sorry to have broken that facade, okay? I'm also sorry to have put down a new high score in She Bangs the Drums by the Stone Roses, but you know what? You might get a chance to beat that at some point. There's another trivia game in the Jackbox pack. Oh! It reminds me, on the cruise, Kate and I finally got a chance to do some of the trivia. Our daughter was old enough to come with us and just like, you know, hang out or watch her iPad for a bit. Some of you guys are cool. Do not go do Disney trivia on a Disney cruise you are gonna get your ass beat unless you're an insane person. I don't think, realistically speaking, I know I have a diverse audience. Nobody uh, watching this is going to win Disney trivia at Disney Cruise, okay? So we went, we went, it was like Pixar trivia. I was like, I've seen most of the Pixar movies. Kate likes them a lot too. We got a chance. It was like question one, what's the name of the rat in Ratatouille? I'm like, fucking Ratatouille. Kate's like, no, it's Remy. I'm like, oh shit, you're right, okay. Question two. What's the name of the dinosaur in Toy Story? I'm like, boom, Rex. This is, we're gonna get perfect. The next question was, what is the famous numerical code that the Human Containment Bureau shouts out in Monsters, Inc. when they notice a sock on the back of the monster's outfit? And I was like, fucking, I don't know. Kate was like, I don't know. 
everyone in the group was like, it's called 2319, 2319. And then the person administering the trivia and was like, how do you know that? And then they were like, I've watched the movie a lot. Also, did you know that 2319, it's called 2319 because W is the 23rd letter of the alphabet and 19 is the, or the uh, wait one second here, I got fucking twisted up. Basically, it's a white sock, W, S, W is the 23rd letter of the alphabet, sock is the 19th letter of the alphabet. And I was like, I'm fucked, brother. I am getting my ass beat. Um, so we, I would say we averaged, sorry, S is the 19th letter. I would say we averaged like 12 to 14 out of 20 questions right. Every single time there were like eight teams that had a perfect score. And here's the thing that was driving me crazy. No disrespect. Some of these people were probably amazing at other forms of trivia, but the teams that won the Disney trivia, they would always have a tiebreaker that required like common sense and they would shit their whole ass. I'm sorry to put it in those phrasings. But one of the tiebreakers was like, how long in minutes is onward? Pixar's onward. And you're like, you're thinking, you're like, okay, it's a movie, um, but movies have been creeping up in length lately. And, uh, you know, Pixar usually tries to come in just be before the two hour mark or something like that. One team, said 86 minutes. I'm like, are you crazy? You think Disney Pixar greenlit an 86 minute long children's movie? You wouldn't even, have, the movie would be over by the time you came back with your concessions. Yeah, this guy, I, you gotta put your base, like a movie is two hours long minus up to 30 minutes if it's for kids. However, Pixar movies tend to creep it up a little bit more. I don't know if it's like a shareholder thing, but yeah, the movies in the modern era are not 86 minutes long. Come on. I mean, sorry, I thought I just heard some shouting upstairs. Is Kate live? I do hear her going. She's, she's saying something. She's live. Okay, <laughs> well, I'll send you over there. It's all right, it's, you know, it's, we're still paying by the message here over on Discord, so don't let me know so I can go have some lunch. It's okay, just go enjoy yourself. It's okay, first day back, we're shaking the rust off a little bit, I understand. We went to the Dole Plantation, you know, the pineapple, pineapple plantation, and um, I was there to buy, apparently, so I didn't, I was looking to buy Hawaiian shirts, but Hawaiian shirts are the most difficult thing to buy in Hawaii. You would think, how is that possible? It's called a Hawaiian shirt. How is it hard to buy in Hawaii? Joanna. It's, it, it's so hard to buy genuine Hawaiian shirt. There were a lot of fake Hawaiian shirts. Any shirt from Hawaii is Hawaiian shirt? Joanna. No, it's not. There's a genuine Hawaiian shirt and there's like a fake Hawaiian shirt. Sand Spike, thank you very much for 88 months. Hawaiian shirts have a Hawaiian, Hawaiian shirt, shirt Hawaii cut. Hawaiian shirt. If you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. Y'all, let it rain, dude. Let me just, let me just enjoy this rain. Thank you very much, Senpai, for 88 months, and you Watanabe for nine months. We're so we back. We are so back. And Mad Dog Nation with the five sub, Poggy. Cool Nathan, thank you very much for two months. Equal sequel, yo, my man is my man is here. Equal sequel, the only rare card, rare be, one and only. But anyways, Hawaiian shirt, the genuine Hawaiian shirt has its own cut, like its own shape of I'm of back. shirt. Fake wannabe Hawaiian shirts are. It's just a normal shortcut. Hawaiian shortcuts, you'll be like, okay, what does that mean? Like the Hawaiian shirt, their length of the torso is quite short. And then the sleeve part is a little bit longer than usual. So if you were to see the genuine Hawaiian shirt and then wannabe Hawaiian shirt, they got a different cut and they don't like the patterns are um, like the, the genuine one is like genuine pattern. And then the fake one is just like, I don't know, just leaves. 
just random leaves or random pineapples or random coconuts or something like that. It's true. You just don't understand. I wanted genuine Hawaiian shirts. Went to so many stores. They were selling fake Hawaiian shirts. They were all like, you know, made in China and stuff like that. I'm like, where can I buy the Hawaiian shirt? And then you, you will not believe me. The best place to buy the Hawaiian shirt is actually in the Dole Plantation, the pineapple plantation. There's a Korean lady who in the gift shop, in the corner of the gift shop, she's selling genuine Hawaiian shirts and the price is right. Other places, prices vary from 30 to 100, 20, 130. Um, but in this place, it was 35. Made in Hawaii and the price was genuine. And uh, the, the shop owner lady is Korean. She was talking to another Korean tourist. And they, the Korean tourist said, asked like, oh, we already bought a Hawaiian shirt. Uh, we're just wondering how much are your Hawaiian shirt just to, just to compare the price. And then she said, um, they're 35 each. And the Korean tourists, they were like, oh, dang it. We paid 55 for ours. And she's like, oh, well, you guys got a little scammed. And she's like, dang. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I went there. I was browsing. I wanted to get Hawaiian shirts for Luna, Hawaiian shirts for Ryan, Hawaiian shirt for me. And then I was looking for Ryan's first, like, you know, like browsing. And then she said, oh, are you looking for Hawaiian shirt for your boyfriend? And I said, oh, no, I'm looking for Hawaiian shirt for my husband. And she said, huh? For your husband? And I said, yeah, I'm married. And she said, you're married? And I said, yeah, I even have a daughter. And she said, you even have a daughter? And she was flipping. And she, she's Korean. So you cannot say, oh, you know, different race. Can I see the other races age or whatever? She's, she's, she's my, my race. She's my, I'm Korean. She's Korean. So there is no excuse there. And then uh, at the perfect timing, Ryan and Luna came by and said, mommy, what are you doing? And she said, oh my God, is that your daughter? I said, yeah, she's my daughter. He's like, oh, she's so cute and also much older than I thought. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm 31 years old. And she's like, you're 31 years old? I thought you were 19 or 18. And I was like, this is the place that I need to buy the full set of Hawaiian shirts. This lady deserves a lot. <laughs> so I, I got mine and I got for Ryan, I got the whole set for Luna. And then she said, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Here's like the like a little gift for you. It's just oh, the yeah. fake flower, um, like a bracelet. Like it's, I don't know how to describe it, but it, has, it says like Hawaii. It's very cute. And I said, oh my gosh, thank you so much. And she gave that to Luna to just like, oh, you know, your daughter is so cute. She's like, oh, your daughter is so cute. I'm like, don't, I have to tell everyone that the best place to buy the Hawaiian shirt. The genuine Hawaiian shirt with the good price is Dole Plantation. Inside of the gift shop, there's a, there's a little corner. And then there's a Korean lady. She sells Hawaiian shirt. It's genuine. The price is right. Go there and buy it. <laughs> but I, we did like a food tour. I don't know if Ryan talked about much of Hawaiian trip. First of all, in, in our experience, Hilo was beautiful. Um, I get that Hilo basically has active volcanoes and it's, it's literally just erupting, you know, every other day. They get earthquakes, they get tsunami. It's not a very pleasant place to live in, I guess. But to visit, it was beautiful. It was like the nature was preserved i guess preserved because it's keep destroying it <laughs> the lava flow the continuous of lava flow and volcanic activity anything that is not letting the nature be preserved is basically destroying it and the nature just grows on top 
but it was so i i'm a huge uh geology slash geography kind of person um earth science was my basically a second major first major performance of music second major earth science as a person who's super interested in earth science when i went to hello it was almost like a jackpot i'm like wow this place is amazing like igneous rocks you know just all the things that i saw in the textbook were there and you can see the layers of the lava flow and and how much like like oh i was freaking out the whole time <laughs> like oh look at this igneous rock oh my god look at this minerals blah 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 blah, blah. just basically nerding out the whole time and then we saw the lava cave or lava tunnel um it's so cool how that is created is that the outside of the lava cools down cools down faster because it's exposed to air but then the inside of the lava it keeps warm because lava is molten rock right so basically, the inside of lava uh, goes down the hill while the outer lava cools down and becomes, forms like a little cave, like a chamber. And most of the times, they collapse because it's not a thick layer of, um, you know, like earth or rock. So things grow on top, trees, plants. And those outweights the cave and it collapse and, you know, that's the end of it. But I guess it takes, you know, it doesn't take like a day for it to collapse. It takes years for it to collapse. So you can actually go see th inside of it. It was super cool. I love caves, but this is like, you can only see it in, in Hilo, basically. Like, wow! I was like, whoa, <laughs> wow, this is so cool. You can see, like, you can see the layers of, of, of lava. Like, wow, this is so cool. And then our tour guide said, there's a really low ceiling point. You really have to watch out for that. There is no warning sign whatsoever. So just don't bonk your head. Just see where you're going and don't bonk your head on that low ceiling point. And then everyone in our tour bus was like, okay, we got you. And nobody got hurt. But then one of the um, older gentlemen took very long time to come back. We were worried. We we're like, oh my God, he must have bonked his head and just knocked him out. And then he came back after five or 10 minutes late. And we said, oh my gosh, what happened? Are you okay? And he said, yeah. So what happened was there was a guy in front of me and he was not paying attention and he smashed his head onto that lower ceiling area. Like what I mean, he bonked his head, like he knocked himself out. So he tried to help him out by dragging, dragging him out of the cave and, and trying to get help. Then that took a long time. And we were like, oh my God, is he okay? And he's like, I don't know, man. He like really knocked himself out. Like it basically echoed the whole cave because he bonked so hard. And I'm like, holy. And then as we we're going down, we see, we saw an ambulance going up. I'm like, oh, that, that ambulance must be for him. But it was, it was crazy. I, I guess it's kind of crazy that they're not handing out a hard hat, like the safety helmet. But I, I get it. <laughs> it's kind of you know <laughs> you watch out for yourself or or else dot 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 ryan almost bonked his head i saved him i said ryan watch out and he's like ah saved his freaking eggshell dude or he would have cracked it but it's uh the the nature in hilo was beautiful it's it's almost i was able to see the true Hawaiian islands, like the, the look of a true Hawaiian island. And the reason being is, like I said, it doesn't really let you have a, like a forever building there because the, the lava, the volcanic activity is continuously happening. So it will just destroy whatever. So it's super cool. And then 
So I think the Halo tour was basically the peak. <laughs> I thought, oh my gosh, the Halo was amazing. Maybe it's gonna be more amazing in Honolulu, but then it was like it was just going downhill. <laughs> like Halo, Halo was the peak, and then every other Hawaiian islands were just kind of like, ooh, was like oh, this is not what I expected. So I didn't realize in Halo there was there was no chickens, so I didn't know there were chickens everywhere. But everywhere else, there's chicken. There there are chickens everywhere, and. I realized that as a city person, I am definitely not used to seeing wildlife. You know, like, sure, pigeons, but imagine the size of a pigeon versus a chicken. You know what I mean? They're like 10 times bigger. And seeing wild chickens, were, it was so, like, I was so nervous. You would be thinking, I was just chicken. If you don't... I just, I don't know why. It just felt like a dinosaur. Like, legit dinosaur walking around me. They kept going, Kakala! Like, screaming out of their lungs. And then, you know, the, the cockfight? They were doing that legit in front of my eyes. They just, the chickens are insane. There's no order of things. Just the... Ch the chicken just saw another chicken and the chicken just fight like bah, 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 like they're screaming like ah, the feathers fly i'm like what's going on dude i'm just walking down the street and then just chickens going crazy like what the hell's going on dude it was i thought i thought oh, oh maybe just that area has chicken or something nah dude chickens everywhere i was freaking i'm like they gotta stop the chickens they're so scary, man. They're so scary. Oh my god. So, hello. Hello. There was no chicken. Probably got all killed by volcanic activity. But then, anywhere else other than hello, chickens everywhere. Just cock a doodling do everywhere. Screaming, fighting. Like, just, oh. I thought I was gonna get murdered by chickens there it's like if it's one chicken it's not scary if there are dozens of chicken around me it's so much scary because dozens of chicken if they were to form hive mind and wanted to kill me i think out of i would get killed like you know legend of zelda style like you you upset one chicken whole bunch of chicken fly in and like fuck you up like it's it was legit that but in real life one chicken, no problem. There's a Link! Link, the greatest hero who saved many, many worlds. God freaking always gets messed up by chickens. He cannot defeat the swarm of chickens. You know chickens are fucked up. It was so scary. I just... I was, I was so scared. And I'm, I'm, I went to my Discord, my sub only Discord, Discord, and I was like, guys, why are there so many chickens? Why are there so many chickens in Hawaii? I did not realize there were so many chickens in Hawaii. And there are chickens in downtown Honolulu too. I'm like, what the hell, dude? It was, it was cool though. Going to Hawaii, um, triggered my ptsd when i was young and i got hurt really badly in in hawaii it's not hawaii's fault it's my parents fault but because i got hurt really bad in hawaii that i just had like a little trauma um going there kind of triggered it i felt like a little sick but then being there it was good people do be chill but then ryan was dying <laughs> and he's like oh, i don't want to I don't want to bring this up because I might just sound like a little, you know, just a salty old man. But there were, there were, I kind of agree with Ryan. Whatever things were not working, instead of fixing the problem, they just go, mahalo for your understanding. Mahalo is like, thank you. This is like, oh, it's not working. We know it's not working, but aloha. This is Hawaii. We're not gonna fix it. Just but thank you for your understanding. And there were a lot of that. And it was kind of annoying. Like for example, there was a toilet, like in the bathroom. It said on the on like on top of the toilet it said, um, 
our we we know this toilet has a very weak flush and it doesn't work very well but mahalo for your understanding i'm like bro fix your toilet what the fuck thank you for your understanding my toilet is fucking broken but you can use it what the hell that is the most dumbest shit of all time it's like <laughs> like legit it has one job and that one job is to flush and the flush is not good but thank you for your understanding if you try that shit in vancouver people will be like yo your toilet is fucking broken fix it dude are you crazy what do you mean thank you for your understanding but we went to another hawaiian island it's not Honolulu or Hilo or Maui. But anyways, we went there. Um, people were crazy for shaved ice, right? The shaved ice dessert. And then there were legit two people working in this shop. Two people, both of them are the cashier and then both of them were the servers. So, and, and shaved ice takes so long to make, right? Because they cannot... They cannot have ready made. You have to shave the eyes by the order. And shaving eyes, it's not like t -t 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 or like scoop, scoop. You cannot scoop the shaved eyes, right? You have you have to just wait for the machine to shave the eyes and you just basically kind of have to rotate the dish and pack the shaved eyes and you gotta squeeze out five different flavors of rainbow syrups. Takes a long time. But there were there was only two people working there. And then in the sign, it says, we've been looking for people to uh, work here, but we have not gotten any help. Mahalo for your understandings. It will take a long time. So it's like, oh, yeah, we realize a bunch of tourists love our shop. They come in just to use their money, but we can't get anyone. So just thank you for your understanding. Wait 30 minutes for your shaved eyes. <laughs> and we're like, really? Really? Well, there were there were a lot of like mahalo for your understanding. It's like we know there's a problem, and it's it's a critical problem. We know, but aloha, mahalo. <laughs> this is the Hawaiian way, and we were a little ticked off for sure. There were there were quite a lot of that. <laughs> There's nothing we can do, dude. Come on. Our local government in a nutshell. Oh, no. But anyways, overall, we still enjoyed Hawaii. It was, uh, we went to, when we went to food tour in Honolulu, I think we legit drove around the whole island. And I think... I believe our tour guide said on the east side of the island is very dry. It's like the desert. It doesn't rain. But then on the west, it always rains. Something like that. Or maybe reverse. I couldn't really hear him because we were sitting all the way at the back. And he wasn't, he wasn't um, mic'd up. <laughs> so I'm like, huh? Huh? What are you saying? <laughs> huh? Like, what? East? Oh, why west? Couldn't hear him. But we, and then we um we went to all the beaches. I I liked how oh man, I the the name of the beaches are really so funny. Like Sandy Beach, Sunset Beach, it really do be the name of beach. <laughs> sandy Beach. I mean, come on, beach gotta be sandy, dude. Like Sandy Beach makes sense. Sunset Beach, you will see sunset on the beach. Sunset Beach. I was like. All these names, 10 out of 10. It was so funny. Have you seen Slackers? I don't think I can imagine any other streamer who might have seen it. Have I seen Slackers? What a ridiculous question. I love you, but I hate you. Which brings to mind how much I love you. We could have worked things out, you know, in my little room. In my little locked room I'm sorry that you had to settle for Dave The one-dimensional man He 
She's filed under cocksucker in my little black book. Sweetness can rot your teeth. Bittersweet cacophony. And you hold the key. You hold the... You think I don't know every word from Slackers? Devin Sawa, Jason Schwartzman. Kind of insane this information occupies space in your brain. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that sometimes when I like I hear a song, usually like during a Peloton ride, I'll, I'll hear a song that I've literally not heard since like 1998, and I still know 80% of the words. I'm like, what are you doing in there? 